Thanks for tuning in. Let's build an is axios error type guard. So I will open a new function and that function I will call is axios error and it will be just an empty function here because I want to tell you how to build a type guard. First of all, a type guard needs a type predicate. A type predicate comes in here and it defines the return type and also asserts the input of this function to a specific type. So how can you think of it? Well, think of an input here in that function that is unknown. And now comes the type predicate, which will say that the input is, for example, an access error. Yeah, and this here is the type predicate. Now we want to turn this function into a type guard. And in order to do that, we need to return a Boolean that says, yeah, that input is an access error, yes or no, so true or false. And let me just put it to true. Now we have a type guard, but this type guard is not well functioning because everything that will be put into will then be treated as an access error. And since this code here always returns true, everything will, yeah, be seen as it and you will run into problems when passing invalid input. Let me give you an example. So let's take my name, Benny, and when I call an is access error with my name and put that into an if condition, then my name will be seen as an access error and I will get the IntelliSense with, for example, the request and all the other things that can be accessed from here. And that is not correct, right? Because my name is a string and um, yeah, the type guard will say, hey, everything is cool with that string. And when I want to access then request or for example, response dot something something, yeah, the code will here crash because my string doesn't have these properties. Well, we have to be really careful about this condition. And that's the important part of type guards and also the weakness. If you don't get it right, your type guard won't help you much. So be very careful with it. And since our input here is unknown, we have to clarify a few things. First of all, we have to make sure that it exists. Input could be null or undefined, but by just doing such little existence check, we are now knowing that it's not null or undefined. And then we can check the type of that input. So type of input could be, for example, object. Let's hope it's an object. And when it is an object, then we can check its properties. And we've seen before that errors can have, um, when they are of type axios error, is axios error as a property. So if there is the is axios error property in that error, yeah, then we probably have an axios error at hand. And of course, I can't name it error. I need to name it input because that's how I named my parameter here. Yeah. So if this is axios error exists on my input, then I will return true because then my type predicate should predict the type of axios error for my input. Otherwise, I will return false because then it's not an axios error. Now I have that cool function here. I can remove this. I mean, the code here uh, will still compile because um, the check will be done at runtime. So at runtime, then it will tell me, no, that's not um, an access error and it won't go in here. Well, let's remove it for now and let's take this is access error function that we built ourselves so we can make use of it here, but we will run into a problem because our function doesn't support generics yet. So we have to make it support generics. Let's put a T in here and then we can also put the T on this is access error to fulfill the contract that this one here was expecting. Small recap towards the end. Our function is called a type guard because it returns a type predicate and it is a Boolean check that then evaluates if the input is of the type from the type predicate or not. The T in the angle brackets is what we call a type variable. And when we pass something to the type variable, then that something is being called a type argument. So we are giving a type argument to our type guard, which then does its evaluation to return a type predicate that predicts the type of the input. Hey, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. 
And if so, then please subscribe to my channel or give me a nice comment because that will tell me that I did a good job and it will really motivate me to make more of these videos. And if you want to continue your journey, then I have good news for you because I will link you the next video here in a box.